So that's why it's important as a daily practice uh, to do some meditation if you are serious about bringing deep healing into, the, into your body, into your mind, into your consciousness. Now, we're going to follow certain steps. The first that I like to start with is to imagine in your mind's eye that there is kind of a bubble surrounding you, a bubble of love, of, of, of both being loved and of projecting love to others. I think this is a wonderful way to set the stage for the, for the entire um, meditative process. Because love is such an, a connective emotion, and therefore love raises consciousness. And as we raise consciousness, we heal. So, first we imagine this wonderful, soft, uh, glowing bubble that surrounds us. Next, we can imagine that we are in a place that for us is sacred. Now sacred, the term sacred brings about images that make us feel whole. Sacred is something we don't violate because of that sense of this is something that, that engenders feelings of wholeness. And a sacred place of, uh, may differ depending on your cultural, social, and personal background. I like to imagine being in a temple, and in that temple there are many rooms. Or maybe there's a central sanctuary where as I walk into it I let go of all of the baggage in my life, all of the sense of troubles and, and, and pains and sufferings I may associate with my personality and with my being. <coughs> And so, it is a place where I really let go of the outer world, and I, I enter into my inner life, into my inner being, in a, into my own inner sanctum, as I'm imagining this inner sanctum of the, of the sacred temple. And, it, and that inner sanctum may be surrounded by beautiful stained glass windows. It, um, I may imagine that there are the equivalent of angels who, who, who kind of fly in the, in, in the, in the, within the air of that, that room and with their magic wands touch my body and make me let go even more of all the baggage with, of the day and of my life that I have brought uh, with me walking into that temple. In that same temple there may be other rooms to do other things. Uh, maybe there's a massage room to, where I can imagine being deeply massaged in all parts of my body or, or otherwise mentally, emotionally, and physically cleansed. Another thing I like to imagine about the temple is that there is a porch outside, so once that I've completed this, this inner cleansing, I can lie in a hammock, and that the temple is on an island which is surrounded by, by nothing but ocean water, and so I can lie in that hammock and go into a further and deeper and deeper relaxation. Now once I've entered this temple and I've surrounded myself with a, an imaginary bubble of love, I also like to imagine that um, I like to imagine that I, I'm beginning to relax more and more, deeper and deeper. And relax means to let go. Now for some people uh, it's helpful to actually tense up the different parts of the body in order to relax. And for others, it's not necessary. And in fact, for myself, I find that it stimulates my adrenal glands and makes it harder and longer to relax. And so I like to just mentally relax. The mind is very powerful. You can imagine a hot iron touching. You can imagine a hot iron touching your skin and you will actually form a blister, at least though, though for those who can who can be deeply hypnotized or can, who can deeply meditate. So the mind is very powerful in changing the body. And we can imagine that each part of our body is relaxing. One of the great tools for doing this is to use uh, the image of water, of gentle water. Again, we want to uh, undo what is um, hardened um, by uh, allowing it to melt and flow like water, and for that I use the wonderful image of butter melting. 
Uh, sometimes I imagine that I am in an arena and there is an altar in the arena with a pan of butter and, and each piece of butter is shaped like um, the part of the body that I want to relax. And uh, for example, uh, I might want to relax the seven cervical um, uh, processes in my neck where, where so much tension is, is being held. And so I imagine the shape of each of those spinal processes is now like a piece of butter and each of those is melting. And in that arena I may be surrounded by hundreds of monks who help me in this meditation. And so as I visualize it, they visualize it. And so we, in unison, we then see the melting of each of those cervical spinal processes. And then all that tension that I'm holding in my neck lets go. So this is a very powerful meditation. And I've done this now since, oh, I've been 17 years old and I'm about 50 something, right? So it's, it has, I think, has a cumulative effect and it helps to overcome much of what we hold inside. When you let go you also, of all these things and also of your emotional baggage that you come with, with, that you come with into the meditative state, you then become part of the flow of all of consciousness and of all of life that consciousness manifests, rather than just you as an individual personality. This is another on a higher healing uh, aspect of the meditation process. Now, um, this also means letting go of the, the, the conflicts we hold on to with our loved ones, with our uh, people we do daily uh, interactions with, uh, in our family, in our business connections, so that we let go of, of, the, of the gripes and we begin to forgive and we f begin to forget, if need be, things that are not really helpful and healing of our own consciousness. Um, when you heal consciousness, you not only heal the physical body, but you begin to heal how we look at others, how we look at our environment, and how we look at the universe at large. This is one of the reasons why in, in our site, Raw Wisdom, we begin to teach a philosophy of actually looking at, at actually transforming the whole of consciousness, and not just a small part having to do with our own life, but the whole of everything we perceive in the world, including even the philosophy of physics and chemistry, where math symbols are central, which are really symbols of s separation, because we want to heal the whole of all of our ways of perceiving the world. Underlying that separative view is really an ocean of consciousness which is connected and whole, and that's what we're trying to come back in contact with as we meditate.